Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats video for Dark Inquisitor Xanash. Just a quick reminder, we do have a written version of this guide available on Wowhead, so if you'd like to reference any of the details that we talk about, or if you want an easy place to look at all of the Void Ritual locations and kind of what path you should be taking for each of them, that is linked in the description box and in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get started. Xanash is a fairly straightforward fight on paper, however in execution it becomes a lot more difficult just because of how finicky this boss is. You basically need all your Void Ritual teams to play absolutely perfect because one mistake will cause a wipe. On Heroic you get two chances and if you mess it up twice then you wipe. On Mythic the big change is that there's a lot more Obelisk that you need to avoid which kind of locks you into a specific path you need to take whenever you're playing soccer and you also only get one chance so if you mess up the soccer play then it's an instant wipe. The other big change on Mythic is that each time a player contacts the Void Orb to redirect it an Awakened Terror will spawn and these adds are particularly nasty because they will chain cast an AoE Fear called Terror Wave and if that goes off it's most likely a Raid Wipe because if one goes off it just starts a chain reaction where all of them will start casting and you're not able to break free of it. On Mythic you will most likely have to deal with either 4 or 5 sets of Void Rituals depending on your Raid's DPS. Just to be safe, I recommend setting up 5 groups, even if that 5th group is just a backup. You also want to keep in mind that the damage ramps on this encounter, so later in the fight you will take more raid damage, which means that you should have your healers go as early as possible, just so that in those later groups you can just send down 3 DPS so your healers are able to keep everyone alive. Let's talk a little bit about the Void Ritual groups and how you should have these set up. The best way we found is to assign each player to either the left, middle, or right side circle and we always face the boss towards the edge of the room just to keep it consistent. Now once they go down to the Void Ritual, they will each take up a specific position. With our strategy, the left player goes and does the first touch, the middle player does the second touch, and the third player does the third touch on the ball. If you do this correctly, you should be able to do each set in only three touches. Now if you go to four it will most likely mean a wipe because you won't have the interrupts to cover all of the ads. So it's crucial that you follow the patterns that we suggest in our guide. I have them up on the screen and you can also check the written guide for those. Because like I said there are a lot more obelisks on mythic and they essentially force you to a single path. The only variability is which side the orb starts in. So the portal spawn location is always preset for each set of void rituals, however where the orb actually spawns is random, so you can have the same portal but spawn and goal will be flipped from time to time. This means that each set does have two variations that you need to learn and understand as far as positioning to how to kick the orb. A few things regarding kicking the orb, you need to keep in mind that in this phase you deal 99% reduce damage so the only thing you should be focused on is doing the orb correctly. Now the way it interacts with your character model can be a little bit weird and it might take some time to actually learn. The orb will always bounce in the direction that you're facing regardless of where it hits you from. However the one big thing to keep in mind is that the orb will collide with the edge of your hitbox so if you're standing still facing forward and the orb is coming from your right hand side, as soon as the orb collides with the right edge of your hitbox, it will start going in the direction you're facing. You always need to keep this in mind because even if it looks like you have a good kick, sometimes the way the orb actually interacts with your hitbox, you might end up kicking into an obelisk and cause a wipe. There's a little trick you can do to minimize the number of wipes you have to people learning how to kick the orb. Sets 1, 2, and 3 are the same as sets 4, 5, and 6. You will most likely never get a 5 and definitely not a 6 set. This means that you can take the 4th group that is assigned, even the 5th if you think you're going to go that far, and move them to sets 1 and 2. And this will give them time to practice early on in the fight without your raid having to go until 4 or 5 minutes deep into the fight and just wipe there because that group is not yet experienced. 
Once the original groups who are assigned to sets 1 and 2 are fairly experienced and they're not really causing any wipes, you can move them to 4 and 5, and that will reduce the amount of time you spent on this boss by a fairly big margin. The biggest thing for DPS is dealing with the Awakened Terrors, and you will need to set up an interrupt rotation. The best way of doing this is using a weak aura that will just tell you when to interrupt based on a preset rotation, and we do the following thing. In melee, we assign 5 interrupts, Typically, four are enough because the ad dies fast enough, but a fifth is just there as backup, and they should all be melee DPS and your main tank. On the second ad, you should have your off tank be the first interrupt. After that, you should have range DPS assigned with the shortest interrupt assigned earlier on in the rotation, and again, you will need five people. On the third ad, you will need purely ranged interrupts. Now, typically, the interrupters who were assigned to the second ad, they can use their second interrupt on the third ad, just because by this time your melee should have made their way to the second one and are able to cover all those interrupts. So just to reiterate, on the first ad, you will need four to five melee interrupts. On the second one, you will have one off tank interrupt and four ranged interrupts. Then on the third ad, you will need five ranged interrupts. During this encounter, you need to be very vocal and call for interrupt covers if you need them. And also the person who is covering will need to be vocal so that the DPS don't overlap. Particularly on the third ad, once the entire raid gets to it, we tend to just kind of ignore it and burn the boss and just cleave the ad. And at this point, you have your entire raid there, so interrupts should be covered and people just need to be vocal about who is getting the next one. Players who are doing Void Ritual sets also need to be very vocal about which interrupt they're assigned to and which one will need to be covered, because if they're doing the soccer set, they're not very likely to be able to help with interrupts. But once the set is done, they're able to jump into the rotation. Until then, they will need their kicks covered. Also with interrupts, keep in mind that these ads do chain cast and they don't get locked out, so you want to kick as late as possible but don't cut it so close that you might wipe the raid. Now, while you're not doing Void Rituals, this boss is probably the most straightforward mythic boss. You want to DPS the boss, and whenever Soul Flay is cast and it is targeted on you, you want to move about 15 to 20 yards from that Soul Flay animation. It will be big and orange, you can't miss it. Your tanks should do a decent job of moving the boss, and if they're not, you should let them know that you need to move because soul flays have spawned. Other than that, dodge the AoE on the ground and don't run into obelisks. It's super straightforward. In terms of comp, you're going to want to bring four healers. You could potentially drop that to three if it lets you skip a fourth soccer set. But for most guilds who will be getting to Xanish at this point in the tier, we'd advise that you at least start with four and evaluate from there. As for which healers you want to bring, Resto Shaman really stands out on this fight due to the fact that it has an interrupt, as well as Tremor Totem, both of which can prevent would-be wipes. Obviously, Holy Pallies and Disc Priests are also valuable due to their DPS and damage reduction cooldowns, but really the most important trait in the healer on this fight is that they can just slam healing, because there's quite a bit of damage going out. As for actually healing Xanish, this fight has a very Rot-style damage pattern. Every two seconds, Ajara will pulse AoE damage to anybody in the room. This roughly equates to 350,000 damage taken per second across the raid, meaning that this one mechanic alone requires about 90,000 HPS from each of your four healers. Additionally, periodically throughout the fight, Xanish will flay the souls of eight players, which will deal proximity damage when they explode. The approximate timestamps for these explosions are listed on your screen now. It is highly recommended that your raid repositions away from these flayed souls and that you assign damage reduction cooldowns for these timings. Lastly, and the reason that we describe this damage pattern as raw, is that once a player has received the debuff to play soccer, they will receive a secondary debuff that acts as a permanent dot. And as your AD completes more and more soccer sets, you'll have more dots out, therefore requiring more healing as you get deeper into the fight. The main thing to know about this mechanic is just that you need to have this debuff on your screen and know that those players are going to be taking more damage throughout the fight. As for niche recommendations on this fight, Lucid Dreams Major is quite good for the healers that might want to run that because there's always relevant leech healing and you're going to be spamming heals. So the mana regeneration is nice as well. 
Additionally, one more tip specifically for Resto Shamans is that you should drop your Tremor Totem once the third add has spawned. And that ought to cover the riskiest stretch of each kick window. On that note, make sure that you do drop your Tremor Totem in the center of the room so that it can be in range of as many people as possible. For tanking Xanish, tanks are generally not responsible for playing the soccer minigame, so focus more on boss positioning, interrupts, and damage output in this fight. There are no special circumstances to optimize for, just a general setup will do. Unlike Heroic, where you can taunt at one stack, Mythic will require each tank to take two Abyssal Strike hits in a row. While the second hit is not fatal, cooldowns should be used here if available. The combination of a second hit and a Torment Explosion can be fatal, however, so make sure to position your character such that there is 10 yards of empty space behind you a few seconds before Xanish begins casting Abyssal Strike. Note that if you taunt during this cast, the cast will still complete on her previous target. The active tank will be responsible for positioning Xanish. Tank her away from Obelisk, ideally trying to work her over towards a soccer spawn location. You will need to move the boss at least 15 or 20 yards each time Soulflay is cast. While the ability will never target you with the rest of the raid alive, moving the boss for this allows your DPS and healers to stay safe. One particular example of this is right before Void Witch Rule 3, the boss will cast Soulflay. You will want to move the boss so that the three people that need to soak this ritual do not take an excess amount of damage from their flayed souls. Other than Soul Flay, Xanish should be tanked on top of the Awakened Terror kill target, as this will allow the entire raid to cleave damage onto both the boss and the ad, and melee to be in range of interrupts. Speaking of interrupts, whoever is not tanking the boss when a round of soccer starts, and this will always be the same person, should go ahead of the group and try to interrupt the second ad, while whoever has threat of the boss should interrupt the first. Tanks are good interrupt to use in general, even later on, since it lets your DPS focus more on dealing damage to the boss. Protection Paladins are extremely good for this role due to their resets on Avenger's Shield. Um, Demon Hunters can also get an extra kick in with Sigil of Silence, uh, just realize that it has a ramp up time. Tanks should not be relied upon to solo adds, but they can interrupt on cooldown every time. Thank you so much for watching this video and thanks to Shampi and Lozi for helping me out. If you'd like to read the written guide, you can check it out on Wowhead, the link to which is in the description box. Again, thanks for watching, see you on the next one.